Well, everybody, I got more goodies coming to mail today. And <clears throat> I've been on a bit of a buying spree. And this particular man, they wrapped this. I'm going to get the knife out, I thought. So, um, this item I'm unwrapping now is something I've been wanting a long time. One up. I think it is what I think it is. And they're very expensive. And like Keith Rucker says, really don't need the newest ones. Because I think the new machinery's handbook is somewhere around north of $75, $80. Well, I'm always a scanning on eBay for deals. I come across, this was a 16th edition. This mid 60s machinery's handbook. And it's, you know, been used, obviously. But I'm going to take this thing to the shop. And the things that I'm going to probably need the most is. And I, I was given some advice here recently, too. And it's kind of the reason that I bought the older version. The gentleman that gave me the inserts I showed in another video here recently explained to me, said, sometimes you run into these situations where your angles and stuff, and said, your newer information's just not there. I said, if you could get a hold of one of these just when people started machining exotic materials like ink and nail and such as that, it would show a lot of hand grinds and stuff. Plus, like some of the things, weights and measures, you know, about brass and alloys, things like that really doesn't change. Drills and taps and, and, and reamers and it's and, and, and what to leave, what not to leave. Places of threads, machine fits, such as that, really doesn't change, hasn't changed that much in 50 years. So, for about 25 bucks, I got a machiner's handbook. Uh, oh, this other one is the milling inserts to fit in the mill that I uh, got. I'll get up here a little closer. What I did was cross-reference these, and this is an eBay purchase, you can see, it's an envelope, and these are ISCARs, and it's a pretty decent grade of insert. Uh, actually, these is pretty reasonable. These are $30 for this pack of 10 milling inserts on eBay. Free shipping, $30. Buy it now. Now, you can go to Banggood and buy inserts, and you can see the Chinese Banggood type on eBay for $15. Hey, this is $30. Bucks. First quality inserts. And this is another purchase I had gotten the other day, and uh, I just haven't showed it yet. These are two eighth inch carbide end mills that I purchased. And the thing about these two items here, this is what I was going to use to repair the other shell mill. So that's today's haul. Come in the mail. Uh, 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 older machinery's handbook for reference material. I've got one of the black books too, by the way. A couple end mills and some inserts for the for the mill. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead, and a lot of times I do this, is I'm not going to, I'm, you know, obviously, one of my viewers come in about the kitchen. Well, what I do is I get my mail in, bring out one of my GoPros. This is the older one today, by the way. And uh, just open it up and shoot it and put it in the videos. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you later when I throw something else in the video. Uh, 
if you follow me on Facebook, you've seen this vice. Um, I picked it up at the local flea market, Christmas Eve actually. Uh, Chris was wrapping presents, and uh, we like, well I don't even know because I signed up for a razor player. But the chief wanted some razors, and somehow they come through surplus. So I go to do that, and I said, well I'm going to look around. This is what followed me home is this vice. Now, while it's not a Wilton, it's not a real fancy vice, it's really heavy and it's a pipe vice. You know, dual action. I think John Double Boost has got one like this. Uh, probably an import. <coughs> I can't see a real name on it. So, my plan is it has been painted with this ugly. Red. I mean ugly. You can see it's plain ass ugly. Excuse my French. So, I'm going to disassemble this vice and clean it up sometime in the future. Right now I'm sitting outside because I really just ain't got a place in the shop and the shop is in a mess because I have started on another project I'm going to show you here in just a minute. Um, so this is the vice. This is going to be, a, and I really ain't decided where I'm going to put this vice yet. I just bought it because I got it at a reasonable price, and I can always use two vices. So it's kind of on the list of things to do. I'm going to do another quick piece of video. I may do put a video together in a few days. Another, you know, this odd end things. This is a Christmas present from Chris. It's just a simple dry erase board that I'm going to mount in the shop so I can make notes on and whatever. So this is, I'm going to probably, I don't like them, I'll probably make some magnets, but this is, this is the kind of way to put it up and that's what I'm going to mount it up and uh, it'll be handy for, for me to have in the shop, it'll probably be on one of the walls, so you can look forward to that too. And the reason being is, I'm starting on a project. You see some of the insulation laying here. And you can see this corner here, kind of at the window, is going to wash it out a little bit where there's some insulation here. And this whole corner of my workbench, I'm going to try to keep you away from the light because sunlight can, tends to wash this a GoPro out. So basically what I've done is I've taken everything off the walls and I think I've mentioned in an earlier video of mine, see that's wall board there along the top. So the plan is, is to put in, I'm going to go around this whole wind area, excuse the washout light. You can see over here is the bare walls. I've taken everything down. If you've seen some of my earlier videos, there's some, there's been in the past a little bit of, uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it. Uh, pieces of pegboard here. What I did is over here near the mill is two pieces of pegboard that come off the wall. This is some that was here. There was another piece behind the lathe if you remember. So I took the piece, took, this is the, one of the wall pieces, I reinstalled it here. And then here is the piece that's partly behind the lathe that I actually cut and mounted here. Uh, my cut is not straight. There's some, it's not perfect, but it will work. It's covering the wall. So above the window here, I'm going to put in the insulation there. And here's the next places. And I've actually done under the bench. So that means I had to get under the bench, take the stuff out. So this corner here where my welders and stuff are, see my ladder's still here, all in that corner has been insulated up to the window. So basically now I'm going to work my way around this side of the wall and this side of the window and do this next and get it walled in. And once I do that, then I'm going to start down the wall, same process, putting the insulation in the wall and walling it up. The wall, uh, what I'm going to use for wall is this here brown as you see up here at the top. It's called wall board, hard board. It's basically paneling. I'm going to hit, I actually got a piece right here. Here's a piece of cutoff. This is what I'm using. It's, it's really inexpensive. It's sort of like paneling. And it's like seven, about eight bucks a sheet. Really inexpensive. 
and it's real thin, it's real easy to cut. So that's and we're putting in basically I'm putting in R13, just a standard wall insulation. Anything beats nothing. And once I get this done, then we're gonna work with the ceiling areas up in here. And I'm not decided yet. I've I don't know where I'm gonna put it crossways and put a ceiling in or insulate to the roof and leave it be. And I, I've, I'm going back and forth on that. I've got stuff stored up there and I'm thinking really seriously, I, I'm really thinking about just putting it to the roof and be done and not just, you know, just leave the paper on it and, you know, so it will be insulated and not put the roof in. I don't think it's going to make that much difference in my heat because I'm going to fix the ease. When I do this, I'm going to have everything, even these eaves have been here. You can see above this light, the light will blow it out. It's a little dark, but you can see up in that corner if you can. See, all that would be insulated. So the shop's in a mess. You know, it's not that big anyway. Then you've got everything destroyed, stuck up. So probably what I'm going to do first is finish the the back here. I'm going to finish this, and I don't know where it'll be tomorrow, this week, or next week. I go back to work again tomorrow, and if there's no parts, I come home. This is handheld, by the way. And when I come home tomorrow, I'll just start on it again. Uh, I'm going to have to have some more, a little bit more pegboard. I'm not going crazy with pegboard. I'm just using pegboard like right around here. Because a lot of my wall space is just really too difficult to get to. I mean, I've got machines in front of them, the mills in front of it, stuff like right here. You know, you think, well, maybe I did a good place, but you really look at it. You know, you don't want it to the floor. And really, with your power panel and stuff, you really only need about this much space. So there's really just not a lot of space to put pegboard. I may put a piece over there on the other wall. I ain't decided on that yet. We'll just have to see when we get there. That's just like these shells will have to come down. I'm thinking very seriously, I may put the shelf above the window. I'm still leaning on that idea. I just haven't decided yet. So that's where we at on that. And I'll keep shooting updates and put them in these videos. I'm going to be Have a good day.